Morning, YouTubies. <clears throat> How's it going? As I'm losing my voice all of a sudden. <clears throat> Doing fine until I turn on the camera. <clears throat> so, how you guys doing? Good, I hope. Well, I have a little bit of an update on Dad. You hush. I can't talk over you. I'm going to have to roll the window up a little bit, but I didn't want to. Anyway, um, got a little bit of update on Dad. After him and I had that humongous blowout fight, and I went all redhead on him, things are actually starting to go better than they ever have in my entire life. Still don't trust him. Still don't necessarily like him. But, things are going better at least. And why did this person just stop right in front of me? Okay, there they go. <laughs> I'm having quite the day here. Anyway, um... Yeah, Dad and I, we had that big huge blowout. And... Got a lot of stuff aired out. Which was good. And I let him know, you know, I was upset about this, that, and the other. And... How do I say it? He actually apologized for things. I don't know if it was genuine apologies. But I took them. I took the apologies. So... I'm trying... To soften my heart towards him. It's, it's hard to explain. I still have all this resentment from way back when I was younger. But yet, in the now, now that we've had the big blowout fight, and we've resolved some things, and I've been doing more and more research on narcissism, and I, so because of it, I'm learning even more about Dad, and what makes him tick, the here and now, I'm able to soften my heart towards him and try to work things out with him. Which is hard. It's hard because he's done so much in the past. But like I said, I'm trying to leave that over to the side. Focus on the now. So, working on it. More for myself so I can... To heal my mental health and everything than his sake but at the same time I'm learning about him so that I understand more so speak of, of understanding more I've been doing a lot more research since we've we had that fight and I'm learning that narcissists are made they're not born they are made that way from childhood and I'm learning that I don't know about all narcissists, but dad in particular is like, has an almost, granted he is adult, he's 88 years old, almost 89, but there are times he has the mentality of a two-year-old in such a way that what I mean is like how he craves the attention like a two-year-old, he does the fake cry at the drop of a hat oftentimes like some two-year-olds uh, did I already say that all the tension on himself I think I did I'm not sure if, if I didn't he likes oh excuse me all the tension on himself uh, he only thinks of himself much like a two-year-old you know two-year-olds you know they don't really they haven't learned everything to um, get to where they think about others usually I'm not saying that as a whole as far as two year olds but anyway a lot of things he does he has the mentality of a two year old and the temper, temper tantrums 
doing thing, ornery things to get attention, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, because of it, seeing him in a different light, I'm able to process things a little bit easier. Um, how do I say it? Somebody was recently giving me a hard time in the comments about saying that I shit on dad and and all this kind of, their words, not mine. And the, how was it they said it? I'm brain farting now. I don't want to have to start this video over just because I'm brain farting. I've done that before. <laughs> Too many distractions today. It's like, oh my God. But, um, no, I don't shit on him. I, until I've come to this realization, I was f frustrated with him because of his past actions. Oh, that's what it was. I was trying to remember what they were going on about how maybe I should let dad sell the house. Maybe you know, they'll be best things. It's, I'm, un they're thinking that I'm irresponsible. Uh, I'm sorry, but I am very responsible. More responsible than I want to be. I was raised by both my mama and daddy to be responsible. Now, granted, I do occasionally mess up. I'm human. But I'm, <laughs> I've got lots of responsibilities. Trust me, I've got even more responsibilities now that mom's died. I gotta pay all the bills and everything. I don't have to. I could turn them over to dad. But I know he wouldn't be able to make it. He's not good with money. He. I don't mean to be negative about the man as far as this part. But in all seriousness, he wouldn't make it. He is not good with money at all. So I've already gotten. You know, all the bills, his bills in the mail, and I've already got them paid within two days after we've gotten them. So we've already got all of Anthony's bills paid. You know, bam, 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 I'm on it. <laughs> so the person that tried to tell me that I'm irresponsible, you need to just go take a hike if you think that. You don't know me. Anyway, focusing back on Dad, um, I did find out that he didn't actually indeed get rid of all mom's stuff like I thought he did. He'd actually been putting stuff out in the shed that's on our, pro our property. Which that made me feel better. It still sucks that he removed everything from the house. But I realized after talking <clears throat> to him more that that was just kind of his way of processing the grief. Because we're both processing grief in our own ways. So at least now I understand that. Now that I, you know, I, we had the talk and I'm able to kind of take, take a different perspective on things. So all mom's stuff is still there, except for clothes. He did get rid of her, all of her clothes and her shoes because I can't wear them. She was tiny. I'm not so tiny. <laughs> I could never. So there's no key, need to keep those. Same with her shoes. She had tiny little feet. I think she wore size five or something like that. I wear a size nine and a half. <laughs> so, which trying to do all the things that she done around the house, it's hard to fill her tiny little shoes, so to speak. So. It does suck that dad got rid of all the stuff out of the house. But like I said, it was his way of processing. So, I I can understand that. I, I can forgive him for that. And at least the stuff is still there. So, and he's not, he still has all the pictures and everything. Everything's out in the shed for safekeeping. Part, I think part of what it was, it was a way for him to just kind of keep his mind busy. And also the fact that 
He's always been more of a neat freak, and Mom's been more of a clutter butt, which I got the clutter butt from Mom. So I try to be a neat freak, but I'm more of a clutter butt. So at least that is smoothed over. I feel better about that. Um, come find out on the house, I think Anthony misread things because of Dad's past actions when he was trying to get um, at the neighbor's house I don't think he was actually trying to get in I think he was actually trying to maybe like knock on the door or try to get the neighbors to wake up or something to see about getting some logs moved off of our property and back onto their property I don't know why but the neighbor had some humongous logs you know big old round things and he'd asked dad if he could put the logs on our property which I don't know why because he had plenty of property to put the logs on himself um, I guess I better explain what I'm talking about the neighbor and his wife they always cut trees like in our neighborhood and the woods and other places and then they split it and they'd sell the the wood for a little extra income well ever since we've lived there the last eight years dad became you know buddies with them you know friends with them and so he'd oftentimes go over and help them split wood and stuff so i think that's what it was i think dad was trying to go over and see if he could get some help moving those logs because they were big and he really didn't need to be out there moving them himself but since he couldn't get the neighbors um, attention when knocking and stuff he went out there and worked on moving them himself didn't really need to be doing that not at his age not by himself at least but um so I think that's what that was like I said going by past um, actions on a lot of things he has a lot of water on the bridge but so that was moved over so what else was there well, there's something else I was going to tell you about that can't remember where he was I should have wrote this stuff down like made little notes at least um, gosh, what was it? I don't know. But anyway, the point is, we've actually been getting better, along better than I have ever gotten along with him my entire life. And surprisingly, since then, he's actually started telling me a little bit more about his horrific childhood. I cannot imagine what he went through. It's no wonder he acts like a two-year-old because oftentimes when people are abused, they kind of get stuck in that, mentally stuck in that age of when they were most abused or I don't know I, I can't I can I read about it but I can't remember what exactly said so it's no wonder he acts like that because my grandpa was horrible evil very toxic man w way worse than dad has ever been <sighs> I was going to say something I forgot I was going to say. And somebody mentioned wonder if he had um, I think it's head trauma. That would make sense too because as a child God only knows how many times he was hit in the head and hit in the ears. Could be why he's lost a lot of hearing in, in his right ear because of getting hit in the head. Granted I've lost a lot of my hearing but mine's for a different reason in my right ear we're both deaf in the right ear mostly but um i cannot imagine 
the things that dad went through. You hear horror stories on the news about people beating their children and stuff. And my grandpa was, would have been one of them that would have been in the news. I could not imagine doing that to a child. And he actually told me a story last night about his brother, his older brother, that was equally is horrifying. He told me about his brother, at like 11 years old, had, there was a cat that was in the neighborhood. So my Uncle Terrell, this is going to be a little bit graphic, I, I'm warning, you might need to click away for a little bit if, if need be. I wasn't planning on telling this, but it, yeah. Um, I'll try to keep it as non-graphic as possible. If I can. But, um, Michael Terrell found a, a cat in the neighborhood, the Tomcat. He squeezed the poor cat's balls and would not let go. I mean, squeezed them, like, extremely hard and just kept squeezing and kept squeezing and kept, kept squeezing while the cat was just crying out in pain. And I guess my dad kept trying to get my Uncle Terrell to stop, and he wouldn't listen. And just kept, kept my Uncle Terrell just kept doing it, kept doing it, and my dad just kept trying to get him to stop. Finally, he let go, and the cat, I guess, crawled away underneath the house and died. Dad said that was, he doesn't even know why Uncle Terrell did that. It's probably because of Grandpa. Grandpa was horrible at doing stuff like that so he probably learned it from grandpa but yeah dad was it's not like he was very traumatized by seeing that and hearing that he's never told me that before there's lots of things lately he's been telling me that he's never told me about his childhood before and how grandpa just would as far as beating his horses and mules, because he was a horse and mule tamer. More like break their spirits. I guess he would look, take his arm way back and wham, 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 and just wail on him. He did the same thing with dad, my Uncle Terrell, my Aunt Lottie, dad's siblings, and my grandma. So it's no wonder dad's the way he is. And see, a lot, like I said, a lot of this stuff I didn't know until recently. Until him and I started working out some things. I knew some, you know, little micro bits here and there. But So at least we are actually on talking terms now and working on things. And Oh, what I was saying was... What I meant to say earlier was him calling the realtor about the house. I wasn't so much wor um, upset about him calling the realtor. Because if he wants to move to a retirement home or apartment or whatever, and us to something else or whatever, or together, whatever would make him happy or us happy, I'm for what upset me was the fact that he didn't um, talk to me about it before calling the realtor. You know, like including us into the decision or the po possible decision. I would never do that to him. If I was ever to actually decide to move or want to move, I would actually sit down with him at the kitchen table and talk to him about things first. And we'd make this decision together. And if I have problems with dad. And a lot of resentment and everything. I'd still sit down with him at the kitchen table. And we'd discuss it. He didn't do that with me. But luckily. 
he's not moving now. The, and the realtor has actually offered to um, have people come over and help him with the leaves, the mowing of the leaves and stuff, if he needs it periodically, especially in fall. So, because, yeah, we don't really need a whole lot right now. It's mostly in fall when the leaves start falling. So, that will help. So, that was nice of her. And like I said, Anthony and I, we've offered and volunteered to help as well with it. I had before, even, of mowing the leaves if he needed help with all that stuff. But he's stubborn. Him and Mom both were majorly stubborn like mules. So it's no wonder where I got my stubbornness. <laughs> so. But yeah, it's... For the first time in my entire life, I can actually say it's nice to be able to have a conversation with my dad and not fight. We actually sat down at the table the other night for two hours looking at old pictures of mom and her side of the family. So that was really cool. To be able to sit there with him for two hours and have a good time and look at pictures now that he has all the stuff out of the house he has nothing to do and now he's starting to be more emotional and it and this time it's actual real emotions there have been times he's had done the fake crying and you could tell there's it was fake crying because there's no tears and stuff but Recently, there's actually been real tears because breathe, Vicky, breathe, breathe, breathe. The realization that mom is gone. So that's been hard for both of us. When it's real tears, I'll, I help comfort him. You know, I'll give him a hug or you know, rub his back or whatever, you know. But it's when it's fake tears, I don't feel like I can do that. It's been hard. For me, my emotions come in waves. I, I have my good moments, and then I, I just have my breaking moments. And it just... I miss her. I always will. But I have lots of good memories of her, and I know she's still around. And even though things are going better with dad and I, I am thankful that she no longer has to put up with him yelling at her all the time. He caused fights with her just to have something to do. I'm not even joking. And he'd sit in his little his uh, recliner and smirk about it when you're just like, starting to cry or get upset or whatever he it's like a game to him so like i said realizing that he's much like a two-year-old that has helped a lot so doesn't excuse him but i have more understanding so and through all this, I'm starting to do more journaling. So that's actually helping too. So. Anywho, I just want to give you guys the update. I don't know what the future holds. But there's the update of how things are at the moment with Dad. So. Which I never thought, him being a narcissist, I never thought that I'd be able to. 
have a relationship with him. It might still get rocky occasionally. Because, like I said, he is a narcissist and he does things like a two-year-old to push the buttons. So, we'll just, we're just taking it day, one day at a time. So, but, anywho, if you guys are new to our channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell. And I'll catch you guys again later. Bye-bye.